Hello, welcome to this episode of the Law of Relevancy podcast. Today we're joined by Arjun Chaudhary. Arjun is a vice president at the Onyx Group and co-founder of Align Studios, a construction engineering and architecture augmenta- staff augmentation business for businesses who are looking to scale but do it globally. Arjun, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Well, I think it's really interesting what you're up to because you don't hear about how some of these industries like construction, architecture, engineering, how they're really evolving. They don't, I mean, we've been building things for thousands of years, but you're actually involved in some really cool innovation in your industry. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I mean, historically speaking, uh, the building development, construction, and design industries have, have been fairly opaque industries. And... It's not just me, but you know, there's a there's an entire generation of people and professionals who are trying to solve uh, and and remove that opacity that's around around this industry. So you know, technology is playing its role. Um, if you if you look at you know just architecture in particular, you'll see that you know in 1994 it was when AutoCAD, the basic platform mm-hmm. of, of of designing things on the computer versus with your hands, was invented and and released commercially. Five years later, you had you know you were able to do 3D. It took another ten years from the late 1990s to for it to truly become uh, a part of the industry. And now you went from an architect or a team of architects being able to design one project every six months to a year. You're now able to do that in a month. Same team size. Now what's happened in the last five to ten years is that now they've uploaded everything to the cloud. So you have these building models in the cloud and you ha- can have your mechanical el- en- uh, electrical engineers uh, and, and plumbing engineers HVAC everyone in different parts of the country or and even the world and they can plug into the same model and make changes and edits to all of it concurrently so so that's some of the cool stuff that's happened very recently and, and you're, you're leveraging some of that to, to the highest degree to grow aligned um, as far as construction is concerned I mean I think I think we're solving for some problems, but we're still we're still fairly uh, far away from actually having uh, consistency on 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 information that we see across the board. So it's going to take some time. Well, this is a really exciting time to see all of those developments and the three D modeling, the uh, ability to get the work done remotely across all those different fields. You've seen a lot of that happen in your career, haven't you? I have. I mean, and, and that's that's really it's 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 interesting you say that because um, actually my parents, both my mom and my dad, are architects, and uh, they met in architecture school. And uh, when I first saw my dad run his office and my mom run her office, I, and they worked together, I wasn't a big fan of bending over and and having a pen or a pencil in my hand and you know working several hours a day. But you know when 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 the technology kind of came about and we saw you know everyone using computers and, and I was intrigued that that's what intrigued me and plus you know the lifestyle was pretty cool in the sense that you know, you're always you're always riffing cool ideas and 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 you're looking at these barren pieces of dirt where most people would, wouldn't be able to visualize much you know you have the opportunity to kind of set a vision set the tone and and at that point of time I was a little naive in the sense that I thought the architect truly designs uh, uh, the, the buildings and there's a very famous saying in the architecture community, which is uh, form follows function. Right. But, um, I mean, over the years, and, and I realized quite early, form follows finance. So, uh-huh. <laughs> so <laughs> I studied architecture, then I kind of, you know, chose not to practice it. Although I have the highest respect for architects, and I'm proud to, proud to be one. My sister, who I co-founded Align Studios with, also is an architect, and she's definitely... Uh, the best architect in our family, at least. But, but, uh, but yeah. I mean, um, my exposure to this industry was very, very. It, it was right from birth. So I saw, I got to see a lot of it, and I got exposed to um, a lot of cool uh, professional situations very early on. My dad would take me to office. My mom yeah. would take me to meetings. So I saw situations very early on. So I had a head start in learning, at least. Well, I, I can tell you the uh, architecture and just in general design has been something that I've been passionate about since I was very young. My my grandfather was an engineer, and when we would drive places, he would even go so far as to even pull off the side of the road and point over at a building and go, 
you know why that building is shaped like that? It's because of, you know, the ventilation or something that has to do with being what was being created there. Or maybe it was just pure beauty, you know, or something like that. And, and, uh, and so I always really appreciated that he would do that. Later on in life, I read a book called The Fountainhead, which was one of my favorite books. It was a great, great book about architecture and and how, uh, like you just said, form follows function and form follows finance. And sometimes with the best architects, you can do both, right? That's true. And 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 that's one of my major motivations just to kind of, you know, I got into the business of, of real estate development just with the intent primarily that, you know, someday um, if I can loosen up the strings on me enough, I can design or build whatever I feel like. I mean, I'm not there yet, nowhere near it, but I feel like I'm walking down a path where I might be able to do that someday what would you build if you could build anything you wanted there's so many so many types of buildings that can be reimagined um right from you know a home and and you know technology is giving us that ability like we used to watch jetsons as kids right? mm-hmm. and and you had these buildings which were basically monoliths with, with with a home on top i'm not saying that's what i want to build but what i'm saying is you know this reimagination that needs to be answered and 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 questions that need to be you know readdressed and and re-answered and then you know, look at your own workspace. It's it's a it's a very cool setting. This wasn't the thing a thing even 10, 15 years ago, but now it is. You've got you know these ma- major warehouses that are being converted into beautiful workspaces to you know inspire creativity. The same thing like you know temples, uh, churches, places of worship. You said you read Fountainhead, Ayn Rand. I mean, that's some of the stuff that you know that needs to be questioned. How do you feel? How do you make someone feel inspired and elevated to? better version of themselves that's a lot of architecture for 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 me that's that's a lot of it like you know how do you inspire people to be better versions of themselves in a particular space and how do you manipulate that, let's say manipulate is a bad one how do you um inspire yeah inspire or adjust their behavior to kind of you know a higher standard than mm-hmm. than than an ordinary space well i yeah i <laughs> I kind of laugh because as you're riding around Tampa or a lot of Florida cities, I mean, I was just in Orlando this morning and drove back for work, but I'm passing the land of the rectangles. You know, there's one interesting building on the, w- on the way to Orlando from Tampa, and it's the uh, Polytechnic, yeah. Florida Polytechnic uh, University, and it is a uh, really, really inspiring building, and I wish we had more buildings like that around Florida. And every now and then you get into some areas like St. Petersburg, where the architecture is older, and people did things that weren't inexpensive. They probably cost extra, but I'm so glad they did because those buildings have stood the test of time. Yeah, look at St. Pete Pier, and and it's interesting you bring up the Polytechnic building on route between Tampa and, uh, and Orlando. I've always looked at that building because the guy who designed it is Santiago Calatrava. He was one of my favorite architects, structural engineers. So he's, his education background is also pretty cool. He's, he's, a, he's a structural engineer who, who's also an architect. He studied structural engineering first and then architecture. So his designs are, are usually testing the limits of structures. And very few architects have that exposure or that symbiosis within their firm. So he built his his uh, ability to design off of you know a lot of strong foundation in, in, in engineering. So... He's got a few buildings like that in Bilbao. He's got a few buildings like that in in, in, in different parts of Spain, and uh, even the even the subway terminal um, in the new subway terminal in New York uh, has been done by him. And those are wow. not I- inexpensive buildings, like you said. They're not inexpensive, but again, they inspire you to do you know cool stuff. But I've been in a car with with you know four five. Uh, prominent developers, architects, and designers, and, and they looked at the building, and all of them said, what a waste of money. Fundamentally, I believe that, but again, fundamentally, I, I feel like, yeah, we should have some more buildings, because that's that's the kind of building you stop and look at, and you're like, you're, you're, you think about it. Even though it took, took like, you know, an, an incredible amount of money to kind of build it, design it, put it together, I mean, it's going to stand the test of time. We are going to drive past that road, and, you know, always it's an unforgettable building when you drive past it same thing with st pete pier like you know no matter what you've had a budget overruns um the buildings you know the the the, 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 the structures deep in the water it's interesting like i mean and 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 for me at least you know life is a lot about you know it's not it's not just about you know the destination i think it's for most other people also it's the process of creating something cool and if you right. end up creating something cool i think 
that's a win. Well, I think making memorable things, whether they're buildings or campaigns or I- anything that you're working on is really, really important. I mean, for example, that Polytechnic building, it it is so memorable. You will never forget it when you see that building. And that is tied to a university. And they've got a lot of other developments they're planning. You know, they've got student housing and things like that. But the advertising and marketing and branding connected to that building will last forever. It's kind of like naming rights for a stadium. True. That's why they do it. True. You know, in order to get all of that exposure, and you've got hundreds of thousands of people that drive past that building every single day, and you're, those people will remember the name of that university. And now they're leading in the space of cryptography and, and all of those different things that are coming out now. So let's talk a little bit about your background. You've talked about some of the background of other architects. You have a really interesting background. So you originally studied architecture in India, correct? I did, yeah. And uh, I mean, I'm not sure. Uh, I mean, <coughs> as, as far as, you know, the first time I said I wanted to be an architect, I think I chose it for the wrong reasons. I chose it for the lifestyle. Uh, I chose it for the, uh, the ability to be able to, you know, do cool stuff. But... Um, but I never wanted to practice architecture. Even when I before I graduated from architecture school, it was clear in my head that I I didn't visualize myself as as, some, as a designer. I mean, uh, I see myself as a better uh, organizer of things. I was always good with uh, numbers, and I knew that you know that would make sense. So even in my fourth year dissertation, and it's a, it's a five year program. In the fourth year, you have the opportunity to design or or do a dissertation on something that you want to do a deep dive on. So some of my friends did, you know, the color palettes in a room. How do they affect your mood? And, you know, shapes and forms. What kind of shapes and forms uh, in an ele- elevation would, would would be impactful? I did foreign direct investment when I was back in India. So I did a maths problem as an uh, architecture major. So so it was fairly clear to my faculty, to me, um, and I, I knew it, that I, I wanted to be in the space, but just not do know just the designing aspect of it and uh, like I said I have the highest respect for designers but I just don't think I'm a, I'm a great one I think I'm, I'm a better facilitator of one and I think I'm a good judge of uh, or I wouldn't say judge but I, I can quickly assess who's got you know um, good talent or not and I've built a lot of businesses based off of that ability to be able to put pieces together well, let's talk about your early career because you really got thrown into the fire didn't you yeah, um, th- and, th- and 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 I was I was fortunate enough to be in a situation where uh, I was leading a team where uh, straight out of college, uh, nobody, uh, very few people get that opportunity where you're working with uh, the defense of a of a fast growing, uh, ambitious country like India, which has you know um, uh, arms and ammunition uh, aspirations, I would say, and they had they wanted to store some missiles in, in some str- strategic locations. Um, even I don't have that information on me anymore, so if anyone's watching, <laughs> trying to figure out, you know, if I've got any information, no. I mean, it's, it's, it's all, it was all taken away from me years ago when I finished the job, but... but One of those men in black little <laughs> memory erasers. <laughs> you don't need to try that hard. I, 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 I don't remember, and I don't want to remember either, but, but on a serious note, I, I mean, they, they are very strict about that protocol, but, but what happened was that we designed these... Uh, underground storage facilities where these missiles were like 30 feet long had to be temperature controlled mm-hmm. and um, if you if you flew a plane over those those storage facilities all you would see would be a little hill or a dune so you wouldn't know what was underneath so this was like this was like very cool stuff i mean to me just the thrill of being able to be involved I, i'm not a fan of war don't that get sounds me wrong. incredibly sophisticated yeah. and then but even irrespective of the complicated nature of building those things, you went to work for an architectural firm and then the person who owned the firm like tragically passed away. And so with your passion for understanding and being able to touch all parts in a holistic way, you were able to help soldier on with that, that mission, right? Yeah. I, I I think that that particular situation molded me and, and has still kind of, you know, given me the ability, to navigate through difficult situations today so it was in um, so a lot of this uh, these services that I carried out were in the city of Delhi and Delhi uh, is, is the capital New Delhi is the capital of India mm-hmm. extremely politically motivated extremely 
I would say bureaucratic in its operations, right. uh, extremely, I hate saying it, but corrupt also fundamentally. I've heard um, that. I've heard that there's a lot of yeah. bureaucracy, and if you want anything done in government, you have to know how to pull those levers, so yeah. to speak. Yeah, and 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 that's that's exactly the reason why I walked away from it because I wasn't going to win there on merit. I was going to win there on different on a different basis, and I didn't enjoy that idea. So I was like, you know, um, it's hard to do that, and I respect people who are able to do that for for, for their entire careers. It's just not something that I wanted. to I totally understand that. I uh, I moved away from a town where I had roots, I had old friends, my parents had friends, and I came to Tampa 23 years ago because I wanted to make it on my own. I wanted to make it on merit, so I totally respect that. And so you came to America, and you were in Gainesville, yeah. and once again, your initiative shows up. I mean, yeah, I mean, are you referring to the ULI competition? I'm refer I'm I'm referring to the uh, you showing the initiative to to talk to the speaker that led to your job right, onyx right so I, I mean one of the other things that I've kind of realized in life is that everyone's a special kind of crazy mm -hmm. you need to kind of you know keep keep your craziness intact and, and voice it to everyone you think who will listen and some of the people who will listen will probably be your type of crazy mm -hmm. that'll you know give you an opportunity so. So I, I had the good fortune of meeting uh, uh, Santosh Govind Raju, who's, a, who's an extremely prominent name in, in the Florida or Southeast um, U.S. private equity market. Um, and uh, I told him I wanted to kind of, you know, do everything from soup to nuts. If I became a developer, if I went to work for somebody, I wanted to kind of, you know, go raise the money, find the sites, put the whole deal together, and, and then be able to execute it. So most people or most organizations of scale would obviously not have the position for for someone like me. They've got special people who specialize, right? Yeah, and that's and that's natural. And and today I would say I'm, I'm in a specialized role, but I got the the thrill and the fancy of having built that with Onyx. So, so Duan, uh, so Sandosh connected me with Duanat Patel, who's the founder CEO of uh, Onyx, uh, extremely entrepreneurial gentleman. Um, stand-up guy always does the right thing no matter what and I've been in close proximity with him for the last five years I've seen how he operates I've learned a, a lot of business lessons from him because it's not been easy for the last five years we've been in hard situations multiple times but you know uh, going back so Santosh introduced me to uh, uh, Duanat and I told Duanat that you know um, I'm gonna do this this and this for you and he had a construction team at that point of time and I said that you know I want to help you build out your development team he had a few buildings but he didn't have a team then so for the last five years I've, I feel like I've done a decent job of getting us there and uh, I I have a sizable team today and uh, Tuan gave me a seat at the table so I'm, I'm grateful for that that's incredible I love hearing stories like that where you really earned your way into your position and in five years, you said it was just a very small team, and now you're over fifty people. Yeah, that includes that includes the construction team <coughs> also, but uh, but the development team would would be I would say one third of that. But again, you're zero at at, at a certain point of time. So it's been a fun journey, um, and uh, I think we're only getting started. I mean, we, we're just barely scratching the surface. We found a few interesting niches of, and styles of developing buildings. Mm -hmm. Um, we were working in three downtowns of tertiary cities in southeast, in the southeast U.S. And one's Murfreesboro in Tennessee, one's Lakeland, and one's Winter Haven. And uh, we've almost figured out uh, a strategy that works for these locations because they are, you know, they're going to be prime in the future. They're right. not there yet, and we're rolling the dice a little bit on on the on, on taking on risk and developing this. And we're working very closely with cities that give us tax incentive funds, TIF money, basically some concessions and abatements on how uh, on, on the on the expenses that we would necessarily incur on the project so m bring down the project cost overall and then give the city a beautiful real estate piece that we intend to own and operate for a few years so that you know that entire community grows so i would say we are specializing in doing catalytic projects for 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 tier 2 tier 3 cities well I think all of those cities believe that they will be yeah. very important cities in the very near future. And in the near future for a city is probably a decade or so out, right? I don't think you're you're really rolling the dice terribly much because yeah. we I think we all know that those cities will become I mean Murfreesboro's right there. 
I think Knoxville's right up the road, yeah. and then Chattanooga's on the other Good side, day. and then you've got Winter Haven, Haven, very close to Orlando, yeah. a massively growing area, very nice place to be in Florida. And then obviously Lakeland is right here between Orlando and Tampa, and it's a major corridor city, yeah. also famous for architecture. Yeah. Yeah, uh, right. Florida Southern, I believe, yeah, University. Southern has the largest collection of Frank, Frank Lloyd Wright buildings right. anywhere in the country, and that's really re- inspiring. The uh, One of the things that I think is worth talking about is how at Onyx, what you guys have done is, in my opinion, is very innovative. You have a, a very focused team, but you go from soup to nuts, the full life cycle of development to management and owning of buildings – and I, how many other businesses take it all the way through all the steps like that? Um, because because this is what we do on a daily basis. We didn't realize that that we were somewhat of a of a speciality, and and that very few businesses do it. I mean, I've been told, and this is not based on any research, that there are, I mean, there are very few firms that do it. I can't it put a number. It seems like common it, sense, yeah. though. It yes, it does. But just think about the effort. The innovation, the expertise, the ability to take yeah. risks, hang in there through market cycles. You need a broad range of expertise. It's hard. And, and uh, I mean, it, it's, it's been an incredible journey of the last five years that I've been a part of it, just to be able to kind of, you know, accelerate some of that work. But, yeah, it's hard. It really is hard. Like, but, but we had the blessing of some extremely, I would say, entrepreneurial-minded investors, and I'll name one because I think both Wanath and I consider him to be one of our uh, better investors and also, you know, one, uh, a mentor, Dr. Kiran Patel. He gave us uh, the start that, that, that Wanath had 12 years ago, and I've been interacting with him for the last five years. I mean, it's just incredible to learn from someone like that. He's a good 40 years older than I am, but he has the same energy as me, as if not more, and he's going and it's not money but that motivates him so that's that's special to see isn't that cool because he's famously successful in the tampa bay area and to see people who are driven by passion and he's obviously a huge philanthropist in the area he also is in the indian community here how important is it to be connected to your cultural community like that that's that's an interesting question, and and uh, and I've pondered on it. So so let, there are two parts to it. Let's say how important it is to be connected. It depends. It really does, like on who you are, what you value. Uh, but Indians by nature tend to kind of surround themselves with with uh, their friends and family, and they have that sense of bonding that they band together mm-hmm. for the for better or for worse. Sure. And 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 it has its pros and cons, like you know. Um, Pros being very obviously, you know, if, if, if one of us succeeds, uh, he becomes, you know, he becomes, he sets the platform for so many others. He's almost obligated to do that. And Dr. K's of the world, like someone like him, he's he's basically an accelerator for businesses like us. Mm-hmm. And, and he thinks of himself as such, and we respect him as such. But again, it is fundamentally based on, on, on being able to trust and, and and I think this is the fundamental answer is this. When someone is fresh off the boat, and I'm saying that respectfully because I belong to that category, um, <coughs> when you're fresh off the boat and, and you know all that you've got is, is hunger in your belly, right. and somebody's gone through that process, they know you're going to fight tooth and nail to make sure that you know, the projects succeed, you know, uh, things are executed in the, in the way that they are planned. So I think... I think knowing that gives gives some of uh, the community that same belief that you know if I did it, this new kid on the block, he's also going to be able to do it. But again, that that sense of belief I think is not just restricted to the community. Like I work very closely with the leaders of Lakeland, mm-hmm. um, Steve Scruggs, who's uh, the Lakeland Economic Development Council. He's the head, and uh, you know some very wealthy families there. They've they've sure. trusted their money and they've trusted their faith in us and. You succeeded to a very large degree if not entirely in doing the things that we promised that we would do but but they were difficult projects and you know people i mean you have to be given a chance and that's what i love about the u.s like they know they know you have no background here they know you have no pedigree here but they let you build that it's when that hunger thing. in your belly man yep. i would uh, that's part of it you know just leadership is identifying those people who have that desire they're not gonna let 
it fail no matter yeah. what. Yeah. That's incredible. But these buildings that you're building are, they're also pretty important buildings. You're, you specialize in medical buildings. Yeah. I mean, these are buildings that are going to be pillars in the community. That's true. So uh, that, that's the first class we, asset class we got into, medical office buildings. And, you know, you, I saw, you know, you have FOI, uh, FOS board down there, but, you know, we work with Florida Cancer Specialists, HCA, and, and several other large healthcare groups and physician groups that uh, are ever expanding. And, and here's the trick about, about doing business with them. You wait for four to five years to get your first deal, but after that, you get a steady deal flow. And, and right. they, they develop that trust in you. And, and you know, answering that question about being vertically integrated as, as Onyx uh, is, uh, that kind of stemmed from our interaction with the healthcare systems because they, their needs were so, like, they needed everything. So in an attempt to solve for their problems, we built out the property management platform. We built out the brokerage platform. Mm -hmm. and, and slowly, steadily, you know, we built a reputation for ourselves to be able to do that. And there are very few firms our size, <coughs> specifically in the healthcare sector, that have succeeded to the degree that we have. There are firms that are, you know, 10 times larger and do right. the things that we do, but they've been in business for 55, 60 years, three generations, almost, if you will. Yeah, when you were just talking about, well, you've been doing this for five years, the way you talk about it, it seems like you've been doing it for a very long time, but relatively speaking, it's just a blip. No, yes, but but again, I mean, I, I can't take the entire credit for it. Bhuvanath has been the one who yeah. built the business, and he trusted me with his legacy to some extent, so so I'm, I'm just, you know, doing the right thing here. Of course, well, I think you, just your gratitude and respect is very easy to see, right? I think I think someone who's a business leader would very quickly give you as much as you'd be willing to take on because you project such those qualities. Uh, I mean, I, I'm not, I, 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 I can't judge myself, but you know, um, I try my best. Yeah, well, let's talk about what's next for, for Onyx in terms of the development. Are, are they doing anything special? You, you talk about the way that you develop buildings. Are they doing anything in regards to the construction process or anything else that's really streamlined? to help them become successful? I think a lot of our success as, as Onyx Group uh, stems from the fact that we are very creative in our financing methods. So we will stretch our financial models to the extremes and see what would work and what wouldn't work. So, mm -hmm. I mean, there's something called pace financing. It's basically um, an, a non ad valorem tax, which is based on, if you, if you develop a building according to, let's say, I won't call it lead standards, but if you make the building green, you get access to some federal funds, sure. which is which makes a project less risky. So you use that with a combination of TIF, with a combination of some concessions, and you know you have a project which is which is strong now in a in a in a market that it, where it would not have no normally been strong. But again, those are just three of the things that we're using. We use multiple layers more, and and I don't want to mention all of it because that is really a that's your competitive source. advantage. Yeah, yeah, but but I mean the, none of this information is you know. Uh, is proprietary. It's all available. If somebody knows how to Google, they can find it. But it's just you know finding the right opportunity and marrying everything together. That's that's ha the hard part. Like you know, your risk tolerance as a real estate developer needs to be really really high. Like I'm I, I'm not sure at 33 how many people have as much gray as I do, but <laughs> I definitely have grayed over the last four or five years. So it is it is stressful, but you're taking very calculated risks. But you know the margin for error is also small. But again, the rewards are big too. Well, that's inspiring, and I think it's also really interesting that you're also an entrepreneur. I was hired because I think I was entrepreneurial. I was kind of you know um, my segue into everything has been based on entrepreneurship, and and I don't know if it is if I would even give, classify that as entrepreneurship because it, I feel like that's my state of being. I right. I've invested in multiple businesses and, and I've enabled multiple businesses and I actively run two right now you know, with Onyx and, and Alliance Studios being being the two. Um, but I mean, what is fundamentally entrepreneurship? You have a goal, you have a vision, and how you get there in the quickest, most efficient form uh, possible with with the least amount of strain on your team and yourself. How do you manage that? It seems like that is going to be a very modern way of doing business. You have. Your full-time job with Onyx, yeah. but you're also a founder and entrepreneur with the Alliance Studios. Yeah. How do you act? How do you manage that? How do you manage that with your teammates at Onyx, with your teammates at Alliance? 
how do you keep everyone aligned and, and yeah. them understanding that you've got two roles? Um, so it's it's fairly simple. So, I mean, uh, it, today it might look a little complex, but, you know, first and foremost, we are living in a generation where we someone see someone like Elon Musk who runs SpaceX and a Tesla and no one questions that or his ability to do that. Here, if I'm trying to do something smaller, much, much smaller at a minuscule scale, it doesn't get questioned as much because... Again, I'm surrounded by the likes of Dr. Kim, the one who mm-hmm. are pretty phenomenal business people in their own right. And um, I intended to start off Alliance Studios within the Onyx umbrella, but uh, when we first tried, which was you know six months into com- me coming into the company, I didn't have, uh, I would say, I had it on my stripes. So the idea got shot down. And uh, I to- told Dwanit that, you know, hey, my sister... She's 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 really good at what she does, and you know my sister chose to go back to India, and I was like, you know, I don't want her degree to go waste. I'm gonna do this with her. So mm-hmm. you know, if it becomes successful, I'll bring you in for the ride. So that's really cool. So you actually offered to bring Dwanath into the business once it became successful. And that's what I did he, because he did the same for me on 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 the Onyx Group side. So that's really really cool because now he is. Ro- He's rewarded for giving yeah. you that chance and yeah. that support. Yeah. But again, I mean, uh, you have to give him credit <laughs> because a lot of people would be like, hey, this is not going to succeed. You can't do two things together. Yeah, I want all your time. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I mean, yes, I'm a little crazy in the sense that, you know, um, in the last five years, I would say, the last six months, I've started to you know ease up a little bit as, as far as work is concerned because I can feel like, you know, I can, I'm, I've become smarter with my time. Uh, but my wife, she's doing her PhD in molecular bio- biology at USF. Mm-hmm. So she's working weekends. I mean, what do I do with my downtime? I, I'm going to create a business. That's what I did. Well, it can be fun. It is fun. It is fun. I mean, she's my wife's seen, you know, uh, we spent one year trying to build a line and had no traction, like zero traction. And in the last 20 months of being in business, I think, you know, we've got five of the top 15 Tampa Bay business journals, um, architectural engineering, construction wow. firms that are our clients right now. So, and we haven't even raised equity for it. We are, we're, we're, we don't want to because we're fine the way we're operating, doing our business. We're a little conservative that way. We might in the next five, six months or a year, so don't, don't hold me by it. But right now we're not, we're not looking for equity because we're already, you know, um, in the green and, and majorly so. Well, you've been recognized as a 40 under 40, speaking of the business journal. Yeah, I was 31. Uh, one of our clients recommended me, and and, uh, and I'm grateful for it. Um, <clears throat> it it has had some extremely prominent people of the city be on that list historically, so I'm you know, I'm humbled and and that was one of the first things that kind of made me realize, hey, I want to call Tampa home. Suddenly, suddenly, you know, when the local community acknowledges your contributions um, at at a macro stage. Uh, although 2020 was probably the worst year to have won it, we didn't have a party or an after party. I mean, there was no celebration. I just popped a champagne back home, but that was about it. But yeah, I mean, it was very cool. It was. It gave me uh, a major incentive. It was a major incentive in, in trying to say that you know, hey, this is where I want to be. They've acknowledged me within three years of you know being a part of the business community. Yeah. I mean, this is this is. I like this place. Yeah, it's a great place to be. I mean. I tell people we've got everything here except mountains, and those are only literally like two or three hours away by plane. So oh. they can keep their cold weather. We'll keep the uh, the very <laughs> comfortable stuff. What's next for you? Um, so both these businesses uh, are, are, are the business that I'm looking to grow. Um, Onyx has a very long uh, runway as far as, you know, what we can potentially do. We're still playing in the realm of developing stuff. I want to develop, uh, I want to build out the acquisition arms for the mm-hmm. healthcare division. I want to build out acquisitions for our multifamily and also for uh, our industrial projects. Build out the team with extremely well-oiled uh, processes so that, you know, nobody's, you know, strained excessively like right now. I was for the last one, one and a half months, right. but I want to kind of build out processes and, We've already got a very sizable portfolio uh, under development, which is strenuous enough as it is. But once we've had this, you know, cycle, which will last, I would say, another... When I say cycle, I mean development cycle. Market cycle, I'm not going to try and predict here right now with everything that's going on. But uh, in the next two and a half, three years, we'll have all of these projects wrapped up. And um, I think we'll level up and and try to shoot for, you know, two, maybe three times the volume that we've got right now. That's really exciting. Where can people follow you? Uh... 
I'm I'm not very active on social media, but but our uh, our both our companies align and uh, Onyx do a great job of of uh <coughs> of uh, managing our company accounts. So I mean on LinkedIn. So so that's that's the one way you'll get information on on what we're up to. As far as Align is concerned, I didn't answer that question. I'll, I'll take a stab at it quickly. Um, we're we're Tampa based right now, and mm-hmm. we're headquartered out in Tampa, which will continue being the case. But you know, we I think we've kind of you know saturated the Tampa market. We want to go national next. Oh so wow! The next four five years are going to be big for us. That's great. So if somebody wants to get in touch with you, just uh, hit you up on LinkedIn and yep. take you yep. to lunch. They don't even have to take me for lunch. <laughs> okay, <laughs> just call me. Yeah. I love it. Well, thank you so much for coming in. It's thank been a pleasure this. speaking with you and hearing about all your success and your hard work. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me over. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to be following you, and you can follow us anywhere where podcasts are found. You can also check us out on our social media at Bake More Pies and also the Law of Relevancy. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.